Islam and the Discoveries of Modern Science Part 4 5 Allah, exalted, says Have not those who disbelieve known that the heavens and the earth were joined together as one united peace, then we parted them. And we have made from water every living thing. Will they not then believe? Quran, al Anbiya, 30 Definitions Dash were joined together as one united piece, attached to each other, i.e. the heavens and the earth were attached to each other. Dash then we parted them, we separated the two of them. Heavens and earth, after they were attached to each other. This noble Quranic verse speaks about Allah's creation of the heavens and the earth and encourages contemplating the originality of Allah's creation. And the matter in which this universe which we observe was begun, in order to recognize its creator, and believe in him, the magnificence of his attributes, and his unrestrained ability. The noble Quranic verse informs us that the heavens and the earth were initially attached to one another as one thing, as he, exalted, says, were joined together as one united piece. Then they were separated as he exalted says, then we parted them. Indeed, modern science has uncovered the truth of the amazing scientific facts conveyed in this noble Quranic verse, which scientists have only discovered in modern times, the Big Bang Theory, which is the prevailing theory in modern times after the discovery of the continuous expansion of the universe. The Big Bang Theory says that as long as the universe has been in existence it has been expanding, so it must have been close together at some time in the past. And if we imagine these galaxies moving in a direction opposite of their expanding, i.e. they were approaching one another, then they will eventually become one piece attached to one another, as he exalted, says, we're joined together as one united piece, at a size equal to the sum of all the galaxies put together. Physicists say that whenever the galaxies draw closer to one another and connect with one another, their mass increases, as does the intensity of their gravitational pull increasing their attachment. Then, the star's gravitational pull on each other increases, and this pressure increases until this matter becomes the size of a particle, then the smallest possible size. Then, this pressurized, highly potent matter explodes, as Allah exalted says, then we parted them, its parts dispersing in the form of rays, then cooling. Eventually becoming the universe consisting of the heavens and the earth which we observe today. How precise and eloquent are the noble Quran's expressions? And what are they an indication of? Without a doubt, they are an indication of the authenticity of the noble Quran, and that it is revelation from Allah exalted, upon his trustworthy prophet, the seal of the prophets and messengers, Muhammad, salutations and peace of Allah be upon him. 6 Allah exalted says, Then he rose over towards the heaven when it was smoke. Quran, Fasalat, 11 this noble verse points out that the heaven, at the start of its creation by Allah, exalted with smoke. Modern science was able to depict this initial universal smoke resulting from the Big Bang at the start of the creation and formation of the universe by Allah, blessed and exalted. Indeed, archaeological remnants were found on the outermost edges of the known universe, which confirms that the heaven at the start of its creation by Allah, blessed and exalted, was indeed smoke. As Allah exalted says, then he rose over towards the heaven when it was smoke. How precise and eloquent are the noble Quran's expressions? And what are they an indication of? Without a doubt, that in its entirety indicates the authenticity of the noble Quran, and that it is revelation from Allah, exalted, upon his trustworthy prophet. The seal of all the prophets and messengers, Muhammad, salutations and peace of Allah be upon him. Seven Allah exalted says, so I swear by the positions of the stars. And verily, that is indeed a great oath, if you but know. Quran, al waqiyah 75-76 In the first noble verse, Allah, glorified and exalted swears by the positions of the stars. And, as is well known Allah doesn't swear by anything except that it is a magnificent thing, of which he informs us and furthermore confirms to us in the second noble verse. That this oath by which he swore in the first verse by the positions of the stars, is a magnificent oath. We ask, what is the wisdom behind this swearing by the setting positions of the stars? And why was the oath by the positions of the stars and not by the stars themselves, as it is in verses other than this noble verse? And what does the fact that this oath is a magnificent oath add to our understanding of this oath? And what makes it a magnificent oath? The answer to all these questions lies in what modern science has discovered, such that modern technology has confirmed that what we see with our eyes is not actually stars. It is but the positions of the stars. For example, it is not possible for us to see the closest star to us, the sun, rather what we see is its positions. The secret is that the sun lies at a distance of about 150 million kilometers from the earth. 
and it takes about 8 minutes for its light to reach us. It is for this reason that what we see with our eyes is not actually the sun, rather it is a position which the sun once passed through. Meaning, the sun that we see with our eyes at a given moment was present in that position 8 minutes ago. Therefore, if the sun is the closest star to us, what about the other stars that light at distances manifold to that of the sun from us? Additionally, there are stars that have exploded long ago but we continue to see them every night or, more precisely, we see their positions every night. Keeping in mind these stars extreme distance from us, hence their light taking that much longer to reach us. For this reason, it is not possible for us to see the sun or any other star. Rather what we see is the positions that they have passed through, as the first of the previous noble Quranic verses alluded to in his saying, by the positions of the stars. So, how precise are the expressions of the noble Quran? And what are they an indication of? Ada Lot Exalted says, By the heaven, and the nightcomer, and what will make you to know what the nightcomer is? The star of piercing brightness. Quran, Atarik, 1-3. Definitions. Dash the nightcomer, the star that knocks, seeking to gain access, hence the description is the nightcomer. Dash the star of piercing brightness, the star that pierces the silence of the sky by its knocking, as was explained by the term the nightcomer in the first noble verse. Allah, glorified and exalted swears by one of his most magnificent creations, the star that he, exalted, describes as a nightcomer, which pierces the silence of the sky with its knocking. Indeed, through the use of advanced scientific recording methods, modern science has discovered a stage in a star's life in which it lets out strong, continuous knocks. As in Allah's description the nightcomer, and in this stage the star is called a neutron star, also referred to as a beater, from heartbeat, keeping in mind the frequency of its knocks. That are sent as consistent pulses of radio waves reaching up to 30 pulses per second. For this reason, the star during this stage, with its strong powerful knocks that continue in a consistent manner, pierces the silence and peaceful calm of the sky. As was the description of Allah exalted, the star of piercing brightness, for this important stage of the star's life, in a unique and concise manner. So, how precise are the expressions of the Noble Quran in their allusion to such scientific facts, over 1,400 years ago which weren't discovered until recent times? And what are they an indication of? 9 Allah, exalted, says, By the sun and its brightness, and by the moon as it follows it, the sun, and by the day as it shows it, and by the night as it conceals it, the sun. Quran, Ash Shams, 1-4 Definitions. Dash shows it, presents, exposes it. Dash conceals it, covers it. In these noble verses, Allah exalted swears by a number of his magnificent clear signs as indications of his unrestrained ability and the uniqueness of his creation. From amongst them the sun, the forenoon, and the moon, which follows the sun after it sets and night falls. Thereafter, he, glorified and exalted, swears by day and night. However, Allah, glorified and exalted, in his swearing by day and night in the two noble verses, and by the day as it shows it, and by the night as it conceals it, clarifies for us that from the characteristics of the day is that it reveals the sun, presents it and makes it plain and clear, and that from the characteristics of the night is that it conceals the sun and covers it. Indeed, modern science has discovered that the layer of daylight, whose width reaches nearly 200 kilometers, is what exposes the sun and makes it clear to the eye. Not the opposite such that the sun's rays are not seen until after they are scattered and reflected numerous times upon extremely minute objects, for instance, dust particles, drops of evaporated water, and different types of gas molecules made up of a particular concentration of air, on the lowest level of the Earth's gaseous layer. For this reason, it is the nature of the daylight layer that encompasses the Earth to expose and show the sun, as in Allah is stating, by the day as it shows it. Modern science has also discovered that the night consistently conceals and covers the sun completely, such that upon exiting the Earth's atmosphere, even in daylight, nothing but pitch black darkness would be seen, and the sun would be seen only as a pale, blue disk, and the stars would be seen only as tiny, pale specks of light. For this reason, it would be nothing but the night which conceals and covers the sun, as he exalted says, and by the night as it conceals it. Indeed, these scientific facts have only been discovered recently, yet the Noble Quran alluded to them more than 1,400 years ago. At a time when no one had even the slightest knowledge of them so what is that an indication of? Ten Allah, exalted, says. The Allah has drawn near, and the moon has been cleft asunder. Quran, al Qamar 1. Narrated Abdullah bin Masood, during the lifetime of the Prophet the moon was split into two parts and on that the Prophet said, Bear witness, to this, dot. Bukhari. 
narrated in Ash bin Malik, that the Meccan people requested Allah's apostle to show them a miracle, and so he showed them the splitting of the moon, until they saw Mount Hera between the two parts. Bukhari In this noble Quranic verse Allah, blessed and exalted informs us of the splitting of the moon during the time of his prophet and messenger Muhammad, salutations and peace of Allah be upon him. As a sign and evidence of the truthfulness of his message. This was after the people of Mecca requested Allah's messenger to show them a sign or a miracle only one sentence supported by Allah would be able to produce. As a testimony to the truthfulness of his prophecy and message. Meaning, to show them something supernatural that proves his he is a prophet, and the truth of what he brought. So, the prophet Muhammad, salutations and peace of Allah be upon him, showed them the moon, which had split into, by the permission of Allah, glorified and exalted, each part in a place. While the messenger said to them, Witness. Indeed Allah, glorified and exalted, has preserved the remnants which confirm the occurrence of this magnificent miracle. Modern science has discovered the presence of very long and hollow cracks on the moon, with depths varying between several hundred meters to more than a kilometer. Their widths between half a kilometer to five kilometers, stretching up to hundreds of kilometers, in straight or jagged lines. These long astonishing cracks are known as lunar rails. A lunar photograph exhibiting one of these long cracks was taken in approximately the middle of the moon. The noble Quran alluded to this amazing scientific fact over 1,400 years ago so what is that an indication of? 11 The Messenger of Allah, salutations and peace of Allah be upon him, said. The stars are trust keepers for the heaven, and when the stars wane, the heaven will be brought what was promised. Muslim, from a long hadith. This prophetic hadith informs us that the presence of the stars is a safeguard for the heavens, and an indication of a balance in the universe. And that if the stars were to wane, their light ceased, and was wiped out. Or if they were to all fall and be dispersed, then that would indicate a disturbance in the order of the universe, a sign of the coming of the hour. Wherein mankind will be brought to account by Allah, exalted, for their actions. The heaven will be brought what was promised by Allah glorified and exalted, which is what the noble Quran informed us of from the splitting and cleaving asunder of the heaven. And its changing to boiling filth and oil, resembling minerals that have been melted and dissolved, and other than that from that which the noble Quran informed us. Indeed, modern science has come to discover the truth of that which Prophet Muhammad, salutations and peace of Allah be upon him, informed us. Such that it has been established that the stars attach firmly to one another through their different gravitational poles. For this reason, the star's presence is a reason for the preservation of the universal order, a part of which is the heaven, as the Prophet Muhammad informed us in his saying. The stars are trust keepers for the heaven. Likewise, if these different gravitational pulls collapsed, then the stars would also collapse and wane, such that their lifetimes would adjourn, hence the collapse of the universal order. A part of which is the heaven, as the Prophet Muhammad informed us in his saying, and when the stars wane, the heaven will be brought what was promised. So how precise are the expressions of this noble prophetic hadith, and its eloquent and concise allusion to this universal fact that was discovered only recently? And what is it an indication of, 